I'ma sell like Cinderella teens. Used to see the things I feel inside these denim jeans. I can't associate with y'all this shit like ketamine. Been on one, been on two, been on everything. Bitch, I'm with my gang, with my squad. What the fuck you want? So be rolling gas, I can't hang. Bitch, I'm fucking gone. I got people down from the jump. Better know your bonds. I got people just tuning in and the love is strong. Damn, they gon' want a piece when you got it like that. Like Jake said, we gon' spend it, get it right back. Stack that internet money till the site crash. They on IG, try get a like back. See, they don't talk that talk, they just type fast. Yeah, we real life, cool, it's really like that. That's a nightcap Like where my lighter at Boy, I got a flight to catch Through these us and these down Swear to God, ain't a dead thing change Don't forget where that sauce came from Best remember my name You take L's A once in a while Gotta charge to the game You gotta charge it to the game Yeah I'm just trying to make my bread and feed the fan These fuck boys need to grow up like Peter Pan Sometimes I get so high I never land Ain't no need to overthink it, I already understand They be plotting on my downfall and need another plan But we walk up on that What's up? What's up, everyone? Happy hump day. It's Wednesday night. We are officially live, and I have an interesting, boring topic to share. We're not going to talk about anything <laughs> exciting here today. So if you're here for the fuck shit, you're not going to find it here. This is pretty much uh, a very not interesting topic, but it's, this is a good to know topic. Uh, this is something that benefit that benefited me a lot over the past uh, ten years traveling around the world, and how I actually leverage a lot of these tips to enhance my travel experiences, as well as getting money back in return. And I have a special invited guest, Mister Roland the Traveler, aka Alex. What's going on, brother? What's going on, Kano? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right, you man. Ready it's for Wednesday the fun? night. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's not a fun topic. You know, we're not here showing, you know, <laughs> mangoes or have any travel beefs. <laughs> so um this is a very <laughs> boring topic. And again, I'm not expecting a lot of people to to sit I don't down know. This and is actually a, this is the this is the biggest travel beef you can possibly have. Oh man, dog, these travel beefs out there is ridiculous, man. I thought the whole point of traveling the world is to escape the fuckery. 
these dudes are taking the fuckery with them and i'm like wow but this is not the platform guys we're talking about taxes taxes so it's not fun but it's something that you need to know and how you could actually write off a lot of your travel expenses which i do and any successful person needs to know how to do this and benefit them so let's talk about it alex what's your thought on it well if if anything alex give us an introduction who you are and everything else Yo, if you want to look me up on LinkedIn, I can be found. So um, I'm verifiable, uh, which Canal tries to do with bringing on guests. Hopefully I do the same. Uh, my name is Alexander W. Foster Sr. So you can Google me. I will pop up. I've been in the industry for almost 30 plus years in sales. Uh, I migrated from several different types of professions from uh, electronics and networking to pharmaceuticals to uh, life insurance. And then I got into financial planning and uh, retirement planning towards the end of my uh, work history. And I am currently semi-retired military vet. So. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about taxes, man. Like how can we leverage our travel expenses to be written off? And there's a lot of ways we could actually do that. And we're going to talk about that. And again, guys, you know, this is not a fun topic. This is not a sexy topic. This is a good topic that you need to know. I'm going to start off. Guys, one way you could actually write off your ta- your travels expenses is to start a LLC. And Alex could actually, and Alex could actually go in further detail on this. I have two LLC. Black Man Travel is a LLC. It's a it's a business. Although I'm although I'm just a blogger, I position it as a business. So all a lot of my traveling that I use, I use my Black Man Travel's credit card, business credit cards, and I keep all the receipts from flight purchases, hotel, meals, transportation. By the time I leave out of that house, I'm expensing everything. So when I walk out of that door with my suitcase from the Uber transportation to my plane, my plane reservation, hotel reservation, meals that I purchased during my flight, I write all that stuff down. And one trick that I do, I carry a Ziploc bag. And this Ziploc bag, I throw all my receipts in there. So if, if you work in corporate America, that's what we do. We, we, we keep all of our receipts and we have to like, you know, Some companies has a process where you have to take a photo picture of your receipt. You have to upload it to a system so they can process it. What I do is I take a Ziploc bag and I just throw all my receipts. So it doesn't matter where I'm at in the world that that Ziploc bag and I, and what, oh, oh, sorry, let me take a step. I take that same Ziploc bag and I put the name of that country I'm going to. So whenever I have receipts in my pockets for my, you know, my, my, my flight receipts, just thrown into the Ziploc bag. So when it's time for tax season, I can refer to that particular country and time frame. And one thing that I do too on that Ziploc bag, I put the dates that I'm out of, you know, I'm, I'm actually out of the country. So if I'm going to Brazil on, you know, September 11th through the 15th, I will state that on my Ziploc bag. So all my receipts that I incurred during that time zone, I mean, during that time frame, I throw it into that Ziploc bag. And one thing I do as well, every country I go to, I set up one business meeting. It could be a rental property viewing. It could be like exploring, you know, some timeshares opportunity uh, or just, you know, ex- thinking about opening a restaurant or a bar. I like, like I'll schedule meetings with um, with owners in these countries. And one thing I, and one thing that I'll do is I'll keep a track record of my communication. So as long as you show proof that you are making plans to, 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 to start a business or have a business in that particular place, and there's correspondence between you and that person, that's a tax write-off. You need to show proof why you're going to this country. You can't just say, I'm going to go to Brazil, go to Rio and party it up and expense it. It doesn't work that way. You got to show proof that you are there for business. And the only way you could do that is through your correspondence. When I mean your correspondence, that's your email. Some type of communication that shows that you've made effort. You made an itinerary to actually have a business meeting. 
Alex, you can chime in on this. All right. So that's on the business end. If you're doing an LLC. Now, part of this is also for YouTubers. Okay. Um, a lot of you guys haven't gone through the formalities of getting LLCs to protect your name against lawsuits. That's really what the LLC does against a sole proprietor. Okay. So if you're a sole proprietor, you don't necessarily have to have an LLC. You're running off of your social security number. All the risk is on you and your personal income. Okay. If something happens to you while you're out in the commission of doing something, you can be sued. Boom. You have no protection. It's hundred percent you. But at the same time, it doesn't stop you from being able to write off a lot of things when it comes to your travel. Okay. If you're a YouTuber and you are traveling, you are blogging, you are filming anything you're doing as far as in the commission of putting content out, that starts to become subject to being able to be written off hotels, flights, just like Kanal said in the business side, on the personal side, it works that same way. So again, if you're documenting everything when it comes to your content, how you got there, you're doing interviews, you're showing, you know, whatever you're showing on your content as a provider, as a sole proprietor, you can start writing that stuff off on the back end. Those travel expenses don't have to be expenses. Ultimately, what your goal is as a YouTuber is what? To get monetized, right? Once you start earning money, you get monetized, you get your viewership up, you get all the things up that you need to do as an individual you can still write those costs off, okay? So you're gonna take a loss. In any business, it takes you anywhere from three to five years to turn a profit. So even though you're a, a budding YouTuber, hello, that's me, I'm a budding YouTuber. So everything from the cost of my cameras to the expenses that I just spent on a cruise, the flights getting there, my food, those things can be written off. E even on my personal taxes as a write-off. I don't have to necessarily take the hit and just say, oh, it was a vacation. No, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Now, the information that both me and Kanal, I'm financial planner and retirement. Kanal is in another business. The things I'm telling you have been verified by a tax and a, a, a CPA. I, I advise you guys, take this information, do your research, also verify with whoever your tax preparer or your certified public accountant is they will verify the information we're giving you today is accurate certain things will be able to be written off with the percentage some things you can write off 100 percent, which is better than what you guys have been doing right now if you weren't even a, 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 a aware of the fact that you can write off a lot of these expenses that you're incurring while you're trying to grow your youtube channel way better even just take it for food food you get 50 percent back okay so all your food that you're expending on your trips as long as you're keeping your receipts or tracking it with your credit card you can print up a receipt guess what you get 50 percent of that back you're already saving money you know we haven't even talked about the flights the hotel stay and everything else now some of your entertainment come on now if you guys are doing some of those other things you know you're not going to necessarily get to write those off go ahead Kano. no um Fearless podcast stated you can uh, you can't go three years writing things off without showing a profit. I agree. So guys, try to make an effort of showing some type of profit. Um, lucky for me, I, I incorporated mines about two years ago, and now I'm starting to see some profit in regards to stuff that I'm doing on the side through my Black Man Travels LLC. Now, recently, I just launched a marketing company as well called Always Marketing. And that I use for traveling as well. So one thing I do, again, as I said before, I travel with a purpose. Even though it's personal, I try to at least make a couple of days or a day for business-related things. So if I'm thinking about purchasing land or property or um, a store, a bit like a, a local businesses, those are reasons for you to actually claim your right your your um your travel expenses and again as long as you show some type of correspondence some type of itinerary you could actually um expense a lot of your your travel expenses just keep in mind that you got to show proof that why you're traveling is for business it can't just be strictly for pleasures and definitely i want to give a shout out to ibn the global spinner 
Uh, definitely thank you for the super chat, man. I really appreciate that, brother. Now, Alex, uh, people want to know in regards yes, to sir. like their travel expenses. Like, what else can they actually write off if they do have a LOC or a you know S corp camera equipment? I mean, that's a primary thing you're filming, right? So the content that you're filming, you can write it off. Now, there's a lot of business owners that can buy huge equipment. That equipment can be depreciated over a period of years. Okay, you can take an instant depreciation or you can you can space it out over a period of five years and depreciate it, that value of whatever you're buying. Okay, so, you know, vehicles, stuff like that, equipment, those things are going to depreciate right off the, uh, you know, over a period of five years or so. But smaller things camera equipment things like that drones you should go ahead and take the instant write-off that year for those purchases why because there's always an upgrade coming within a year or two you buying that thing okay part of the depreciation value on a, on, on equipment is because over the period of time that it depreciates something new comes out something later greater better that your company is always going to want to upgrade to IRS knows that, so that's why they give you a period of so many years to write something off because you're always going to upgrade. They know it's going to be dictated that you're going to have to upgrade it. With camera equipment, things like that, you can write that off right away. Your cell phones, you know, you're buying your cell phones, you're filming with those, you can write that stuff off. Okay. Take one thing, that, I, take it off the top. One thing I want to let you guys know all this stuff you see up here are my equipment. These are my camera lenses, my camera um i have more i have other cameras my drone all that is insured and that's the thing guys if you are a youtuber and you're purchasing equipment make sure you put insurance on your equipment through all state or through state farm because in case you know your bag gets stolen or lost you could actually claim those items so everything this and this, this is something that Bacchus put me on a few years back is to make sure that all your equipment all your travel equipment is insured so if you were to lose your bag or get stolen or Chica drug drugged you and robbed you, um, you can claim it. So make sure all your assets from your laptop, your, um, you know, anything that you use for work related purposes, make sure it's insured through State Farm or Allstate. They have a great um, insurance program and now for content creators where you, if, if you were to lose it, you can actually get all your money back based on the value that you you hinted that you're that your equipment's worth so uh that's something to keep in mind um one thing you should look into as well and again guys if you are a content creator it, it doesn't it's not really expensive to start llc depending on your state like here in georgia it's only 95 dollars. but i think if you were to go to like north dakota montana like um vermont it's like 40 bucks 50 bucks a year so if you are considering you know becoming a content creator and uh or you want to start a travel concierge business start an llc that way you're protecting yourself but also too you can write it off you're doing something that you really enjoy but make sure that you're trying to make a profit you're trying to like create some type of revenue behind it right uh mr fearless asked the question about you can also write off a portion of your house um if you're using it absolutely you can uh, per square foot of whatever the size of your your overall building is, whether it be an apartment or whether it be in house, whatever your square footage is in the room, like I'm using a second bedroom right now as my office. So I can write off against whatever my rent, my overall rent is, I can write off a per, that square footage off my rent every month. I agree. Okay. And also too, so it, he's it, absolutely correct. You're doing editing in your room, whatever yeah go ahead no and, and also two guys if you're using your phone a lot for business write that off just you got to understand what's the percentage um of your phone usage goes towards your business versus your personal i say like what i do is i write off 40 percent of my phone usage towards business and the remaining is personal because that's more realistic don't try to like i mean unless you got a business phone that's 100 percent committed to your business it cannot be your personal cell phone it has to be a business line then yes you can write that off 
and just like what Fearless, Fearless Podcast just highlighted, you could actually write off the the, uh, the square footage of your office. Like if you want to section off a room, like the living room or take a, a, a whole bedroom and get the square footage and you could actually write that off because that is an office space. So again, guys, w- what I like to do is um, I have multiple uh, business credit cards. I have some with American Express. I have some with Cedar Car- uh, with, with Citibank, Chase, and and those business cards they're for black man travels and for always on marketing so any expenses that i pick up on these two cars is easy to track so if my cpa wants to see all the expenses that i made during my travels i could just pull one report or multiple reports from my from my business credit cards so if you are traveling try to stick to one or two cards don't use multiple card and credit cards because you're going to lose count exactly where you're you know your expense went i mean unless you're like myself where i carry that ziploc bag with me and i just throw all my receipts in there i never throw not a single receipt and the receipt could be in a whole different language i try to make sure i get the american price like okay what's you know if i pay one thousand baht for for something i try to get it in dollars so i understand so if i need to report it because there's a possibility that you may get audit so if you do get audit you got to make sure you have all the documentations ready to go Or at least documented proof. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously, if you're filming content, you can show that you actually were in a certain country where you can actually justify some of those expenses right off the bat because you were in that country and you show proof positive you were filming in that country. OK, so uh, write offs. What that means is it goes against your income. So let's say, for instance, you're making 8k a month you're paying your basic bills your rent your car notes all your insurances and things like that but that month you take a trip that trip is actually you you've heard of roi right return on investment that trip is going towards your content that you're 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 filming on youtube you know whether you make money back on that content because after it becomes a business to you every time you put out a piece of content you're looking for a certain rate of return the expenses that go against the production of that content versus what you make back based on views, clicks, and everything else. That's where it starts getting into the business aspect of being a YouTuber. But initially, like I said, until you get a good following and you know your your ROI is gonna be like this, every time that you put out something, you already know you're gonna get at least nine to 10,000 views and those views are gonna equate to something whether you have something that's uh, affiliate links inside of your description or whatever, there's a return based on the production value of whatever you're putting out. But up until then, you're kind of offsetting against those future uh, gains on your affiliate links or your viewership. So Mr. Bacchus, I know you have a huge following. I know you know your numbers as far as how many times people are viewing, how many people are clicking through your description, description if you have affiliate links you know what people are clicking on that um so it gets real detailed if you want to track your information when it gets to that so the write-off part is your net income minus all the different things that cost you money that that month that year whatever to go against your income the biggest reason why we're doing this is um we were talking me and canal about the game of earning an income but trying to keep the majority of it away from Uncle Sam. Everybody's heard of Trump and using loopholes when it comes to taxation. There are taxation benefits to a lot of corporations and individuals if you're aware of them. And when you're aware of them, you become aware that it becomes a game to you. You make 100K, you're trying to keep at least 75K of it in your pocket. And the only way you can do that is to offset your income by write-offs. Now we're skipping as brothers and and sisters, we don't know all the games to the rules. So so, um, we're skipping off a lot of write-offs that you can take even in your everyday lives that you should be able to take off of that income that you're earning every year. So this is why the importance of this this initial um, podcast was to make you guys aware you know, the game is to keep your income. You can brag all day that you make six figures. 
especially in the economy that today, a lot of people are making the income and all of a sudden when they get paid, they're looking at their hand and it's like, what the hell happened to all my money? What are you doing with it? We have are a you question. aware of what you're doing with your money? Are you aware of the things that you're throwing away? Go ahead. Well, um, Baca says, do I need do to show receipts receipt for my equipment? My equipment. Yes. And let me answer that. Yes. You need to yep. keep a receipt. So if you do buy secondhand equipment, make sure that person still writes your receipt and also to look at the current value of that camera or that lens that you're purchasing. So more than likely when you report it, they're going to they probably look at the current value of that lens. It is not based on what you brought yesterday, but what's the value it is today. So always keep that in mind. Anytime you, anytime you purchase any equipment or anything that's related to your business business always get a receipt if even 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 if it is a a, a paper receipt where they handwritten it make sure that you get their signature on it as well now alex mentioned something about the the whole income tax bracket because just recently i i read the the new 2023 tax uh brackets that recently came out and i learned something valuable I, i've learned how this country works and basically if you if you fall within a certain income you are taxed heavily i mean very heavy and um lucky for me the past couple of years i've been doing good financially where i i broke over 200k and out of that 200k i was taxed at 47 percent. so really i didn't see it it was just like okay yeah, you know, because once you pass ninety thousand dollars, it's a big jump on the on the tax. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if if you fall between one eighty five and more, man, and you don't have no assets and no ownership or ownership or anything that you could use as a write off, you're getting taxed forty seven percent. So yes, exactly. it's a flex to say, you know, hey, I'm making six figures. All right, cool. I think nowadays the new middle class is making six figures. Because that doesn't put you in. I mean, yes, based on the, the the statistics, only only a small percentage of America is actually making over six figures. However, based on the current cost of living and way of life, making six figures is going to be the the new middle class. And the thing is, you're getting taxed like crazy right. if you're single and have no assets to lean on because they're gonna they're gonna just tax you. So. Always keep that in mind. It's like, yes, although you're making more than 200000 300000 whatever, make sure that you got things in place that's going to help you keep your money. You know, we're talking about receipts right now, but the receipts are if you're getting out of it. I came from an industry where I had to keep everything that I ever did with the client for almost 10 to 15 years before I could throw it away. Just in case there was some blowback on what I sold as far as a policy and insurance. Um, the quickest advice I could tell you is if you get a receipt, snap a picture of it, document it that way. When you come home, digitize everything into a folder, put it on a flash drive and record it in a folder for a month. That's where all your receipts are. You get what I'm saying? If you don't want to keep the paper laying around, which it can become cumbersome trying to keep track of all your paperwork, especially in certain countries. You know, get that receipt, show that you spent money on food, average out what your food is per day. They're not going to hold you to the penny. OK, you can average what you're spending. Like when you work for a company, you had a per diem. OK, you, you might have gotten 40 or 50 dollars a day for per diem. And that per diem was supposed to cover all your meals, your food or whatever entertainment, because they were inconveniencing you um, by having you out of town away from your home. Um, same thing with you as a person put yourself on a per diem per day that you're going to try to average out to hit or come close to that you feel like needs to be your food and drink budget outside of entertainment okay so when you travel you have an idea of how much you want to spend so you don't necessarily overspend either you know you can choose to splurge when you want to but if you put yourself on a reasonable um per per day per diem you can kind of figure out how much you're spending per day you know what i mean um but yeah hold on some of these questions are flying by me so quick in comments yeah it's not a good thing to use cash um like i said with technology now everything's electronic 
credit cards track everything you know um make sure you're printing out your 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 bank statements your credit card statements keeping a file on that or at least electronically filing everything i just got in the habit of scanning everything i've ever had even my clients folders you know i instead of keeping paper i kept electronic copies of everything you know um so i i would say start organizing your year we're already in october the year's only got a couple more months left so for all those that have already taken trips go back document those months that you were gone go back to your bank statements go back to the things that you spent money on in those months look at how much you uh, expended and look how much you can write off keep that organized so when you sit down with your cpa or your tax preparer you can let them know hey i filmed this this is part of my content I need to have additional write-offs besides what you normally figure for me because I have a job and these are the write-offs you're giving me normally for my job. A content provider is a side hustle, even though it's a sole proprietorship, you're documenting it, you're putting on film, that's proof positive that you're doing something with the activity or with that item so that you have the right to write it off. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, everything you just said, and Fearless just made an awesome comment. A write-off is a business expense that reduces taxable income on the income statement. Example, when you make 100K, right. you have expenses of 20K for your business. You only pay taxes on 80K, not 100K. Yes, I learned that. I learned that as of this week that uh, it doesn't matter if you make, you know, $300,000. The goal is to position yourself making $90,000. I'm going to say this again. <laughs> yeah, we talked about uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and it's spoke... the flex is in the income. The flex is keeping the income that you make. The flex is yeah. keeping the income that you make. So Just like in it, retirement. And what I prep my, my clients with is the flex is to move from taxable investments to tax-free investments and in growth to where you're not paying Uncle Sam in retirement when you need most of your money. So those are the flexes. It's not to make the income; it's to keep the majority of whatever you make. You can make a comfortable living at seventy-five to one hundred k if you're only paying what fifteen percent of that to Uncle Sam. Think about it. You're working smarter, not harder, in order to be more comfortable than somebody's making two fifty, but they're paying damn near forty-five, fifty percent, and they're throwing money away because they're not writing off the stuff they're spending it on as some type of a deduction. They're yeah. blowing the money uh bacchus <laughs> you got jokes man no mangoes cannot be written off mangoes hey, you know cannot what? be written what? off brother unless it's something i mean un unless you go to uh, an establishment and you <laughs> use credit card <laughs> they give you a receipt you could position as a business meeting man hey well if i mean, I mean let's, japan, let's, let's, where legally part of buying mangoes is in japan that's part of the entertainment part of business you might be able to pull that off in, in the US IRS tax code. But there's a video I prepared and Canal can put the link in. It's not for everybody. Only the people in this room and the people to come back and visit this room later. That link is only it's a it's a it's a private link. So anybody that clicks on that link inside the description once Canal launches this uh, for public consumption, that link will have a video to break everything down for you. As far as what what's what, it goes into good debt versus bad debt, the pros and cons of investment with Bitcoin. There's a lot of information that we didn't want to bore you guys with. Yeah, but it's there. <laughs> so even though it seems like we're not structured in what we're saying, there was an idea behind why we're doing this. But we also wanted to open it up and keep it entertaining because uh, talking about taxes can be boring. Yeah, I mean, know, I mean it's necessary information that you guys need to think. About. Yeah, it's just like when I initially spoke to Alex about this, I knew for a fact that, hey, we both knew coming in, like, this is not a fun topic. This is a topic you have between you and your boys drinking a beer and just like, all right, hey, what can I do to keep more money in my pocket? Like, after I saw they got the amount of taxes that I paid, I was like, and I learned how the tax bracket system works. I'm like, okay, I need to position myself making $90,000 on paper. Because you making six figures on me, a goddamn thing, if you're getting taxed 50% of that. So, uh, and also, too, we talked about, you know, how you can leverage your credit to actually, you know, enhance your travel experience. Guys, 
I have multiple credit cards that I use. All, um, and, and those credit cards, I earn points and rewards. And you best believe I use my rewards and my points. Hotels, flights. Use your credit card as a way to build up your points so you can get more miles. Uh, instead of using your debit card, just use your credit card. And every every 15 days, use the cash that you're going to use on your debit card to pay off your credit card. And that alone, then depending on the promotion of the credit card, they may give you four, four, five, or ten times the points based on the season. Like right now, City Card and Chase is having like you get for every purchase you get five times the the the, the miles. So they give you a certain time window between, let's say, Halloween and Christmas. If you use your credit card to spend this amount of money, you get these amount of mileages, which is a good thing. So what I'll do is I'll use that credit card for my daily expense, but I was going to, I still got the cash in my debit or my checking account. I just take that and just transfer it to my credit. So I already, I gain all the miles and I get the, you know, my credit points and my credit stays in good, in good standing. Right. What's up, Fearless? <laughs> yep. it, I, I, I take that even one, one step further. I take that step even one step further. The things I know I'm going to pay, <laughs> my normal expenses, my rent, things like that, I use my credit card. And then I pay my credit card off to compensate for my mortgage and everything else that I normally are going to pay anyway. I use that to build up my uh, travel points. Because those are bills I'm not actually going to pay anyway. Why not put it on my credit card and then pay my credit card off before the end of the month? So I'm not getting any interest, but I'm also building up points and usage of of my credit card for travel. Right. What's going hey guys, on, Fearless? Yeah. Uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Yeah. You hear <laughs> I won't stay long. I'm in a hackathon at, at work. So I'm oh, okay, okay. Say so your point, man. What, I mean, but, but I wanted to... to uh, go with your point, Kendall. So, if you know, uh, I was always grew up, you know, I played sports and played football. And I remember when I was back in Cincinnati, there was a person who got drafted. And the first thing they did was set up like this nonprofit and was giving money away. And I was like, why would somebody do that? And it's because I didn't know the money game. And so I started making a lot of money. And so, what you were saying is true. Uh, right. I use my um i tried to display it here but uh like my profit and loss sheet so i try to use my youtube to actually lower my mm -hmm. tax break i'll give you a good example you make a hundred thousand dollars and you just spend twenty thousand dollars uh on your travel on your equipment all of that now you pay taxes on eighty thousand dollars so you've actually spent the government wants you to spend money on your business so you've actually spent Correct. twenty thousand dollars on your business and, and you haven't done, you know, you don't have that profit to pay. So when you get to a certain tax bracket, uh, what and what got me is just the same thing that got you. I, I started off in IT and I got advanced very mm -hmm. quick. I went from like 40,000 and I started going way up and I wasn't prepared for that. And I was like, hold up, what? What do you mean I owe $8,000? $8,000? Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> Yeah. And that's when I talk to my financial right. advisors. You, you got to find some things to write off. If a kid, a business. I'm like, can I do YouTube? She's like, yeah, if you do the travel. <laughs> I don't know about the kid part. What's that? <laughs> but she's like, hey, you know, here's a. Yeah, I work, in, I work in sales. So my. I, I... Mm hmm. No, I'm yeah, I, I, I did a deal for the state of California and it was worth over five million dollars. Yeah, I did a deal in the state of California. It was over. It was worth over five million dollars for a uh, flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do pharmaceutical sales. So that commission to me was a three hundred thousand dollar check. You don't yeah, think I can try to figure out how to write as much of that off and work oh, with my yes. my uh, my. Uh, president in order to pay me out over a period of time. I broke that 300,000 down to new payments over a period of 12 months. I did not want the whole 300,000 at once. Are oh, you no, crazy? you're, you're lucky. You know I tried to get my bonuses. Get that? You know, let's break this down into uh, some chunks so I can find some write-off. No, 
You're right. I think people don't understand that. The Good. more you make, like when I get a bonus, I hate getting a bonus. I mm -hmm. want my bonus in stock or something else because here's what happens. When you get a bonus, you know what the tax rate on the bonus is? 50%, 60%. Exactly. So yep. if they give you a $25,000 bonus, you're not yep. walking away with 25000 So that's why you have to find a way to mm -hmm. write some things off, to use the business for it. But I, I want to uh, make sure, I think uh, Ruck has said something that may not actually be uh, true about if, if you live outside the United States, I don't care how long you live. If you look, and I don't know where my visa is at, look on your visa. Um, it says it don't matter where you are in the, in the world, you're going to pay taxes in the United States. Mm -hmm. they, that's there's people that don't and they can't come back mm -hmm. because they owe. It. So you have to file uh, whatever thing with the IRS, no matter how long you at, and they want to tax you for whatever income you made overseas. And I think U.S. and another country is the only place in the world that does that. It says we want to tax you on money that you made and you're not even here because they say you may be um you may live somewhere else but you are a resident of the united states and so that is why a lot of people are um what's the guy's name uh it was the crying song brian mcknight <laughs> brian mcknight gave up his american passport to become a bohemian from the bahamas citizen because of tax rate and i think another one from uh founder of facebook uh one of the the guys that was on facebook not not the hive and the twins they went to like singapore or something they became singapore citizens only for the taxes so it doesn't matter if you live out of the country you're going to pay them taxes mm -hmm. yeah 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 and, hey, and i didn't do yeah. mine away dual citizenship becomes an option sometimes in taxation correct now, I, I didn't do mine. I didn't create an LLC or anything like that. I just, on my tax form, I just stated I had a business. Uh, and that's how I knew that, you know, I was doing it for write-offs. And when mm -hmm. it came up to the third year, she was like, look, you know, you can <laughs> take a, pro a loss for three or five years, but you have to show. So it's a legitimate business, some type of income that you've, you've made. You can't just keep writing off. Yeah. So just be wary of that. So Yeah, you you're right. You, you're totally you. right about that. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I, I've done too, I created a, a, a EIN number, a tax mm -hmm. EIN. So I'm not using my, my personal social security. I'm using my business tax ID. So my credit cards is under my business tax ID. So um, that's one way I actually use to help offset some of my expenses. But even I'm using my personal um, income to, 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 to uh, support my business. Correct. I'm looking up something, guys, because I always see this when I go out of town, and I wanted to, to tell the guys here. Uh, Warren, all right. So he said I'm going to fake my death. <laughs> <laughs> Bacchus is on one day. What you drinking on, Bacchus? I want some. <laughs> I want to see if I can put this in the chat. So, but yeah, hey, you, you there's have... there's so many different strategies, and what I was telling Kamal. Go ahead. Okay. What I was telling you talking all about this? was there's work. so many different ways that you can layer a business on top of. Yeah. I got a delay. I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. He has a delay. Um, so <laughs> You can layer companies on top of companies. They're called holding companies. And then you have companies that actually. Yeah. So. Um. Uh, I'm going to shut up and let Fearless talk since I got a delay. Uh, give me one second, guys. I wanted to put this in the chat, but I, I'll i read it instead. Uh, because I noticed this when I was traveling, but I, I thought it was because of the fact that um, I was using like a, a buddy pass when I was going. Because every time I would leave out, they would say, hey, we owe you some money. I was like, oh, okay, that's great. I get to have it. But if you go to Columbia, and I'll read this, because uh, the last time I just went, I went down to Columbia, and I kept seeing this sign that says, you know, take this QRL screenshot for taxes. And then I asked a, a person what that means, and it says, uh, 
taxes and customs of Colombia will refund to foreign tourists visiting mm. Colombia 100% of the tax they pay on purchases of goods taxed in the Colombia territory. So wherever you go, your hotel tax, your any of those taxes, wow. they will give you that money back that you paid. So when you get to the airport and say, I have that on the app, you get all the tax money that you paid while you're in Colombia. So you guys that are traveling to Medellin to get the mangoes, <laughs> you, you know, you go to a restaurant, hotel, make sure uh, you look that up. There's When you're in the airport, they have a QR code you can take and uh, you get those taxes off. I, I, I took advantage of that the last time I went. Oh, yeah? And how was the process when you did that? Was it easy? They have it on the app. You know, okay. you have it on the app. You do the receipts and not even an issue. Wow. Not even yeah, an issue. Um, I knew someone who actually did that a few years back. There you he go. Kept all the receipt and he reported it and he got the money back. He got all his taxes back. In Columbia. And it's, uh, when I went, it was immediate, meaning it wasn't like, oh, we're going to mail you the money. No, yeah, yeah. He got they it at the airport. Box. They had a box at the airport um, and wow. you signed something with your passport number and they paid you right then and there before you got on the plane. You got your money. Yeah. <laughs> so I loved it. Wow. Yeah. So that's I impressive. Was, yeah. I was How many people for going to Columbia know that? Really? Yeah. How many people going to Columbia know that? Uh, none. A lot of them don't. Is, is there anything else you want to add on? Because I know you say you, you're doing some. So no, I'm work. not sure. I'm going to help these people do some hacking tools. I just wanted to jump on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and the only thing I'm going to say to you guys, it does, like you said, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It matters how much you can take home. Yeah. So just make sure you find those business ways. Uh, do mm -hmm. it. Do it um, smart. Because that's that's how the rich keep their money. You mm -hmm. see, they keep their money. That, that's how they do it. And that is the reason, you know, we are employed. So we pay a higher tax bracket than somebody getting their money doing dividends. That's yeah. why some Fortune 500 or CEOs, mm -hmm. they say, I want to get paid in stocks and pay me one dollar a year. And you're like, what? Because they're not really getting taxed on that one dollar. And they seven percent compared to 45 percent that they would pay on taxes. Mm -hmm killer so travel but travel smart guys you know because you can correct you can spend more money on that and you will enjoy yourself exactly. it's great that either and i was told and i'll let you guys go after this either you're going to pay this thirteen thousand dollars to uncle sam or you could have used that on uh your business and travel so i decided i'd rather uh travel instead of paying correct. uncle sam that money i agree well thank you brother man like always Great. Uh, I'm going to be listening. Uh, so smart. carry on, guys. A great show. Great information. Uh, I hope that people listen to this because the, the information is great. It's not mangoes, but it's money. And uh, <laughs> Chris Rock said you can always get chicks by chasing money, but you can never get money by chasing chicks. I'll That's see true. you. Later, bro. Hello. Unless you're a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah again guys this is not a an exciting rah-rah topic it's is what it is but this is what will separate you from the crowd and how you maneuver in these countries and how you do things um the more information you know the better and that's something that i that i'm starting to understand now information is key do your own research guys just like how you planning for your trips don't rely on somebody else's experience to dictate your experience take the time do your research plan and follow through because again i could have an amazing great time in one country and give you the same information then you could have a, and then you could turn around and have a, a miserable time so always keep that in mind and um there's ways you could cut some a lot of your expenses through traveling and just understanding the tax codes the you know um the loopholes in regards to like how to actually do things and also to leverage your credit guys one thing is I'm, you know, I'm first generation um, Haitian American. You know, I'm, you know, I came here when I was six months old in 1978. I never had anyone teach me the importance of money, the importance of credit. I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn where my credit score was like four, five, five twenty at one point because I didn't know. And it took me to actually realize, like, hey, listen, 
credit is your friend Le use credit as a leverage and once you understand that man your credit score jump up to 750 you can have anything you want in a heartbeat and trust me the credit limits don't be like no 300 dollars credit limit i'm speaking about 25 40 000 credit limit so understand that guys take advantage of these airline credit cards as well take take advantage of these promotional uh sales that you know if you use your credit card within a certain time frame you get triple quadruple the points of mileage take advantage of that stuff because again instead of you using your credit card i mean instead of using your debit card use your credit card and take the take that same debit card to pay off your credit card alex correct you're absolutely on point man you know um it, it, you just gotta work smart when it comes to your money um like I said, the game is to keep it. And there are plenty of loopholes and there are plenty. I'm going to stop saying loopholes because they're not really loopholes. The rules, as long as you know, the rules to the game, apply them. You know, it, it, it's, it's not a loophole. It's not a trick. It was written there for a reason. Only the professionals know about it. And, and certain key people, um, obviously all your congressmen know about it. You know, all the rich people know about it. Hmm. I wonder why everybody else don't know about it. You know, yeah. but once, you know, certain people get in the financial district, they either keep that guarded or they share it. I'm the type of person I share it. You know, I've learned a lot from mentoring around a lot of white folks that had a lot of money, you know, and they let me in on some things and I, I don't have a problem with sharing it or at least giving you the concepts behind it. Howard Hughes. Okay. Howard Hughes was one of the richest men in the world at his time frame, multi-billionaire by today's standards. He had so many companies that had holding companies that had holding companies that had holding companies. This man qualified to get what you would call social security. He qualified like he was broke. You know what I mean? And the reason that was is because he was indebted and each one of his holding companies owned a portion of whatever businesses he was in you can literally close a business today if something was going on open up an llc or whatever in a different name take all your, your equipment and everything else instead of somebody the bank season all your stuff all your stuff is owned by different holding companies they're indebted you're indebted to those holding companies because they own your stuff but they're your companies you take your stuff, you move it over to another company, you open it up in a new business name, you're right back to work. This is what people do that know. When you hear somebody say, oh, I'm filing bankruptcy, that ain't a big thing. They're basically filing bankruptcy on a name and an LLC, but they got five other LLCs they can roll all that stuff over to. They're not losing anything. It's a loss against their overall income. Sometimes people have filed bankruptcy so they can show a loss against some other businesses. So it looks like they took a loss overall in their overall personal income when they didn't. I mean, sometimes they file bankruptcy to protect their assets. And that's something Correct. that, you know, within the black community, you know, credit, we're not taught credit. We're not taught how to actually use our money. Uh, I remember as a kid, my mother used to put her money on the, underneath the mattress. I remember that. I, I remember that because I used to be the one that I used to pick up the mattress and take money out of that damn <laughs> envelope. All the, until I got all the baby boomers did it. All the baby. Yeah. Yes. But my, my thing is this, guys. Understand your tax bracket. Like whatever your income is, you fall into a tax bracket. Understand what are you able to actually qualify for. The more information you know, the better. Because again, you're if you have a good accountant, he or she is gonna protect you. They're gonna tell you what you could do. Like my boy does mine, he tells me everything. Like, no, you know, you could do this, you could do that. And it's just like, but at the same time, I need to do the effort on my part to look up a lot of these new tax laws that's popping up all over the place. The more you know, the better. So again, yeah, it's cool that you make six figures. However, you want to position yourself making sixty-five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars on paper. People don't people don't need to know how much money you make. That's not important anymore. Because at the end of the day, there, there's been a recent study how a lot of the upper middle class are literally living check to check. 
because they're living way above their means. They have car notes, mortgage, credit cards, multiple credit cards with high debt, student loans. So yeah, I want to, you know, a chick will say, hey, I want a guy that makes six figures, but okay, but he's living off of $20,000 in his pocket. And that 80000 is on accounted for it. He's living a good life. So, hey guys, just live live below your means. Travel smart. Find out what are the some of the tax laws are that could benefit you. Leverage your credit to enhance your travel experience. Again, you got all these point systems, miles that you know people are not even using. I think I came across an article that says that at least only twenty percent of people actually use their mileage, their miles. Only twenty percent of most credit but card you know, users airlines know use that. their miles. Yeah. 20%. So they that means it, that the they 80%. Take it for granted, they already know that most people aren't going to use the stuff or the benefits behind the credit card, but they got you on the interest rate from the credit card. Yeah. You get what I mean? So it's a game for them too. Hey, we'll give you mileage, but they know most of the people aren't going to utilize the mileage, but they're definitely going to get the interest off of you using that card for them. Yeah. Well, one thing I do, guys, and I think recently Delta Airlines just recently changed their mileage um point system and people are, are currently pissed off about that so what i do all my all, all my airline points i use them spirit frontier delta american um i say spirit airlines i, I use spirit airlines as well i use all of my airlines miles i don't i don't let nothing roll over because again you just never know when they're going to change it and once they change it on you you lose those mileages just like what delta just recently did a lot of people lost their statuses. All right. But I, I encourage you guys, there's a link that he dropped in uh, the chat room, but um, hopefully you log it into the description line um, after we get off of here. Drop that in there so they can click on that link. There's a lot of detailed information that we're kind of glazed over um if you guys take the time it's a it's a short 15 minute video and it goes off of different uh ideas behind taxation what's good uh good and bad debt you know um different things like that that you kind of opens your minds up what's asset depreciation what's asset re relocation versus allocation you know what I'm saying? Different thought processes to understand how to utilize your income in order to protect it from Uncle Sam taking it all because you're just not doing the right things and not being smart with your money because he has no problem with taking it from you. You know, he, yep, he, he allowed you to have the rules, but if you don't know the rules to game, they'll take your money. Correct. And, and thanks again to Fearless Podcast for jumping on the live stream. He shared, he shared a lot of great information. Again, guys, if you in Colombia, doesn't matter what city, keep all the receipts that, and all the taxes that you pay for, you could actually get reimbursed. So go ahead and look into it. You know, as you prepare for your trip to go to Colombia, just look it up. Um, you can actually go to the airport, carry all the receipts. You can report it through an app and you'll get reimbursed all the taxes you paid while you're there. I'm not sure the mango is going to give you a receipt, but hey, you could try to ask for it. <laughs> That's um, flipping awesome, though. I did not know that. That's actually a plus for me to want to go to Columbia. I've never been. I like that. Yeah, this is it. This is it right here. So, guys, look it up. Look it up, guys. If you plan to go to Columbia, look up the tax reimbursement and follow the process. Well, guys, I'm not going to keep this long because, again, this is not a interesting topic. You know, I, you know Alex and I, we kind of geek out when we talk about this on the phone. So, you know, it's like, hey, <laughs> but besides that, look, take advantage of the information that's been, that's, that's been given to you. There's a lot of information that a lot of brothers decide to be ignorant on. You don't have to be. As you prepare for your travel, as much as, you know, you plan for your travels, learn some of the benefits that you, you that you have access to by strict, by simply looking it up. Understand where you fall in the tax bracket. How can you hide some of your cash so where you can report less? And just chat was smart, man. You know, Alex, I'm gonna have you close it out, man. What you, what you think? My, my biggest thing is learn the rules of the game. If you're gonna earn, 
earn money in the United States know how to keep it. You know, the United States have strict rules when it comes to the IRS. Uh, so many people are benefiting from utilizing those rules in order to write off what is legal. You know, it's not hiding, it's not finding loopholes. It's just understanding the rules of the game. If you're going to play in the United States and you want to uh, floss the fact that you're, you're making six figures, and that's great. How much of that are you keeping? And how much of it are you keeping because you know the rules or you're trying to hide it all? Don't hide it because you don't want Uncle Sam to come looking for you either. You know, go ahead and do the honest thing, but understand the honest thing is also written in, in the rules so that you can write certain things off. Be smart with your money. Don't just spend it on anything that does not provide some type of interest coming back to you or, or has a, some kind of net gain to it. You know, you can waste a lot of money, but if you're going to waste a lot of money, at least put it on a document to where you can get some of it back. You know, yeah. these trips you guys are spending a lot of money on. I know a lot of you guys are travel vloggers and probably haven't written off a dime of it for all the years that you've done it. You've done it out of your pocket saying it's a vacation, but you documented it. That's a business. You're a sole proprietor. Whether you're turning a profit or not. I agree. I totally agree. So with that being said, guys, have a Lots amazing video. Yeah. Have an amazing night or good night. And uh, tomorrow we'll be back live. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually highlighting my Cuba trip, which I took about a couple of months ago. And also, too, on Friday, we're going to have a fun podcast. We're going to talk about Brazil. I'm going to give you guys the real truth that goes down in Brazil. And and again, and, and I want to share some, some of my receipts of Brazil. So uh, with that being said, guys, have amazing uh -oh. work week. <laughs> have have amazing work week. Make sure to like the video before you um, log off. And uh, thank you again, guys. This is not a fun topic. This is a, a needed topic. I think a lot of brothers need to know some of the benefits of actually leveraging your credit, but also understanding the tax uh, system. Uh, use it to help cover your expenses, man, especially if you have a business. So with that being said, thank you so much. Have a good night and talk to you guys tomorrow, man. Later. Peace. Seventy-five years. That's how much time you get if you're lucky. Seventy-five years. Seventy-five winters, seventy-five springtimes, seventy-five summers, and seventy-five autumns. When you look at it like that, it's not a lot of time, is it? Don't waste them. Get your head out of the rat race and forget about the superficial things that preoccupy your existence and get back to what's important now. Right now, this very second. And I'm not saying drop everything and let the world come to a grinding halt. I'm saying that you can become a seeker. You can be loving more, you can be taking some chances, you can be living more, you can be spending more time with your family, you can be getting in touch with the part of you that lives instead of fears, the part of you that loves instead of hates.